what pisses me off? I don't know if you can see this. This is a copy of one of my recent paychecks. $222.52 for 31 and a half hours of physical labor. Now that's roughly about what I make on an average week. So let's say $225, just round it out and have a good whole number. $225 times 4 is $900. Roughly 31, 32 hours per week. So it's considered full time. Now explain to me how someone is supposed to survive off of $900 a month. You can't. As a single person, if you had a one bedroom apartment, I lived in Orlando for 10 years, so let's use Orlando as an example. The cheapest apartment that you're going to find are roughly six to $700 for a one bedroom. I am a single person, I do not have a partner and I'm not married, I don't have kids, it's just me. Now, $900, that's what we're starting with. Right off the bat, let's say I have a $600 apartment, that's 67% of my income going to my rent. Now I have $300 left over. Okay, and that's not even considering that you have to pay first, last, and security, or at least first and security in most places, which means you miraculously have to save up this money before you can even move into your $600 apartment. So, let's talk food. You can possibly get by with $50 a week as a single person, however, this is eating extremely shitty food. I'm talking ridiculously cheap, no nutritional value, it's slowly killing you. So let's up that number to $75. $75 a week times four weeks in a month, there's your $300. So right now with just rent and food, we're already talking $900. We have zero dollars left for anything else. Let's go over some other things that an individual might need. All right, so we've got rent and we've got food. What about transportation? You're probably doing one or a combination of things. If you have a car, that means you have to pay for gas. Right now in Florida where I live, gas is approximately 225, 229 per gallon. So let's say 229 per gallon. I have a 15 gallon tank. That's about $35. If you don't have a vehicle, you're likely taking public transportation. Let's give New York City as an example. That's where I just lived for the last five years. For a monthly Metro card, it's currently $116.50. Now, if you do have a vehicle, by law, you have to have car insurance. This can run you anywhere between $100 and $200, maybe more, depending on your driving history. Let's just split the difference and say $150. And it's 2016, so you probably have a cell phone, which means that's another $50 to $100 plus. My personal phone bill is $70, so let's add that up. These are just the bare essentials. This leaves absolutely no money for entertainment purposes, or hobbies, or traveling, or doing whatever it is that makes you happy that brings you joy, that thing outside of work that you do to keep yourself sane. Now people like to give a lot of excuses for this. There are two of which that are most popular. One, why are you still here? Why don't you go elsewhere? A coworker of mine just asked me this question yesterday when I was ranting about only making $8.50 an hour and how all of us were worth way more than that. Why don't I go elsewhere? It's pretty simple. Most of the jobs around here are going to be from minimum wage to nine, maybe $10 an hour if you're lucky. The second excuse that they give is, why don't you just get an education? Why don't you further yourself? Guess what? I have two degrees. And even years after, I still was completely unaware of what it is that I really wanted to do. I take responsibility for this. I don't place any of that responsibility on either of the programs that I was in. But I have a problem with a society that tells people at the age of 18, as soon as they graduate high school, that they have to miraculously decide what it is that they want to do for the rest of their life. But unfortunately, the society here in the United States, and specifically under capitalism, does not allow for people to make it from the bottom up. 
Not saying that it doesn't happen, it's just an anomaly. It doesn't happen that often. And those ones that it does happen to, then they're held up and said, see, you can do it, I came from absolutely nothing. No, that is the exception, that is not the rule. Underneath capitalism, you have to have a percentage of the population that is completely unemployed. And don't let them fool you when they tell you what the unemployment statistics are, because they don't include the people who have stopped looking, they don't include the people who are underemployed. They don't include people in prison. So they give you this little tiny number that says, oh, only 2% of the population is unemployed. No, it's way, way more than that. Because there's people in the position like I'm in right now and that I have been my entire adult life and I can't make it. I can't, I'm just barely hanging on. I just barely have my head above water, which is why I'm so grateful for being able to move back in here with my parents. It is not ideal. I don't want to be a burden to them. And the only way that I can get out of these debts that I owe and I can get a surplus is to be able to live rent free. One of the things that I absolutely love about Cuba is their rent is only 10% of their income. So if I'm making $900, I'm only paying $90 in rent. That's feasible. That's legit. But once again, under the system of capitalism, it allows for landlords to jack up the price of rent and gentrify all of these areas. And affordable housing, that's a fucking joke. The affordable housing in New York is not affordable. In order to even apply for some of these apartments, you have to make thirty-two dollars to $48,000. What do you need with affordable housing if you make that much fucking money? The most I've made in my entire adult working life is about $16,150, and that was just last year. But going back to why it is that a person might not be able to just up and leave their job and find another one. There's a huge problem with a system that allows a minimum wage to be just over $7 an hour. After taxes, I make roughly $7.03, $7.09, somewhere in that vicinity. Meanwhile, the bosses and the CEOs and the CFOs, they're all making bank. They're profiting. Their business is profiting. And you guys, us, we are the workers. We are the ones who make it happen. Not them. They do managerial stuff. And yes, they have a, a hand in making the business run. But we are the workers. Without us, Nothing happens. And this is why a certain portion of the population has to remain unemployed. Because you have that pool of people who are saying, oh, you don't want to do the job? Oh, you want to strike? Well, I desperately need a job. So if you're going to go on strike, I'm going to take your spot. We're expendable. We're not valued. This is not a society that cares about people. This is a society that cares about profit. Another thing. How many of you actually know how much your bosses make? How many of you know how much your coworkers make? We're not supposed to talk about this. You're not supposed to ask your fellow coworker how much they make because there's a huge chance that somebody that came in after you is actually making more money than you are. Everything about a business should be transparent. Every year, you should be able to go to your bosses and find out exactly where that money went. How is this money allocated for this business? Where is it going? How much is overhead? How much are you making? How much are we making? Because I guarantee you, unless you work for a most awesome company, the chances are that you are being shafted, that you should be making way more money than you are, and they can afford to pay you way more than they are. This society has conditioned us into being against each other. Even when my coworker asked me yesterday, you know, why are you still here? Why don't you go get another job? Instead of attacking a system, which is what we should be doing, and we should be all uniting together and saying, you know what, we are worth more than this. You know, we need to fight for it, which is exactly what fast food workers are doing right now. There's a huge majority of fast food workers that have gained $15 an hour which is fucking amazing. Kudos to you guys for fighting. The only problem I have is that because of the system that we live under, by the time you are implemented that $15 an hour, the prices of everything are going to go up. And it's, it'll be almost like you are making just as much as you were now. We have to fight against this capitalist system. This system does not work for people. It works 
for the wealthy. It works to make an elite number of people rich off of us. It is exploiting our physical and mental labor and it needs to stop. It needs to stop. It needs to fucking stop. You are beautiful. You are worth so much. And we need to realize that. We need to overcome this conditioning that all we are is a body that's meant to labor. There's no reason that you should be physically or mentally laboring to get food on your table. There's no reason that you need to be physically or mentally laboring to afford a house. That you're gone from the vast majority of the day because you're being exploited. We're not taught to think critically. We're not taught to question. We're taught to be robots, to just come into work and clock in. Perhaps you're really lucky and perhaps your boss really cares about you. I worked for the number one theme park, that one that you see everywhere, no matter where you go. I'll give you a second to think about it. After seven years, I was only making eight thirty-five an hour. Actually working for this small business here in the small city that I live in, I make more than I did working for a corporation that is everywhere, that is literally global, that has theme parks in three or four, maybe five different countries now. I remember doing a bit of research when I was first getting started on this journey, on this political journey, and how angry I was to learn that I was only making less than $15,000 a year, barely surviving, eating ramen noodles. My coworkers were eating ramen noodles. You know, just, just, just this unhealthy shit that we were putting into our bodies because that's all we could afford. Meanwhile, the CEO was making $19 million as just his base pay. That means that was his guaranteed pay. That's not including all of the free perks that he got, all of the bonuses that he gave himself or was appointed. Um, it's just disturbing. It's very alarming. Nowadays, people are doing the work of two to three different people and they should be making two to three times the wages, but they're not. They want to keep us alive just enough to be able to use our physical and mental labor. We don't get paid that much. Most of us are on welfare. Guess what? To all my conservative people out there, we could pretty much eliminate welfare if we raise the wages to where people could afford to not have to get food stamps, to not have to get assistance. You should be the ones fighting for a higher wage. If you don't like welfare, if you don't like people getting free shit, or you, what you call free shit, what I call sustainability, then you should be fighting alongside of us to make sure that ra wages are raised. But you're not because you're so conditioned to believing that people can just work hard and it's a guarantee for success. It is not. Hard work is not a guarantee for success. So one of the things that I was hoping for when I first started this YouTube channel was to possibly get some of you who had never thought about these things before to kind of be thinking about them. I don't want to think for you, I want you to think your own thoughts, but I know for myself there was so much that I didn't know and, and I had an influence uh, that kind of got me to think about these things. Uh, so I'm hoping that I can be that for you as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to continue with me on my journey, please hit the subscribe button below. And until the next video, with revolutionary love. I keep doing that. People are going to talk and think I'm Illuminati or some shit.